everyone, and welcome to days 37, 38, and 39 of our RV10 build. We are continuing work on the tail cone. A couple quick reminders. One, my videos are very far behind where we actually are in the build. We have actually started a couple days ago working on the fuselage, so if you want to keep the most up to date on our current build status, you can follow along on Instagram at plain.lady. I am going to try and do a better job of getting all caught up with the videos uh, to get them closer to where we currently are in the build. Another thing is I want to make sure to remind you again about service bulletin 18-03-30 regarding the elevator control stop. I mentioned this in the last video. It does not come up today. We are not working on that part now, but since I mentioned it in the last video, I've seen at least one comment on Facebook and one comment on Instagram where people had mentioned that they were not aware about the service bulletin. You can find all that information if you go to Van's website and you click on the RV10 and on the top of the RV10 page, there'll be a little button you should see there that says, I think, safety and service information, and you'll be able to go and pull up that service bulletin. So we commented on the video about the final feeling, they're like, I wish I had your page tips. And then that was like, I think I'm a little bit OCD about the plane. A little? Uh, you are got it. Oh my god! Let's get back to the build. So we are still working on those stiffeners from last time. And now that they've been cut to length, we are drawing center lines down the entire length of them. And we've had a couple parts at this point in the build where they weren't drilled and so they didn't have holes in them. For example, like on the spar caps that you had for the vertical stabilizer right away in the beginning it didn't have any holes in it, but you, that was different. You clamped it down tight and flush against the flanges of that spar. So you just needed the right clamps and it held it nice and snug for you where it needed to be. With these J channels that you're using as the stiffeners, they do thread through some notches in the bulkheads, but it's not like it's a super tight, snug fit where when you you get them placed where they're supposed to be, that they are held exactly lined up properly with all of the holes in the skins that they're supposed to mate up with. So drawing these lines down them is to, meant to give you a center line that you, can, uh, that you can work with to line up the stiffeners with the holes there in the skin. So you know how you're supposed to have a certain amount of distance between the center of the rivet and the edge of the skin that you're drilling into, this center line is going to help make sure to do just that. So you draw the center line on there and you're gonna use that to look through the holes in the skin and line up the J channel where that line goes through the center of the hole and this helps to make sure that you are leaving adequate space between the hole you're drilling and the edge of the J channel and helps keep it all lined up nice and straight along the whole length of the, um, the whole length of those stiffeners. One thing I did find that was a little helpful, as you can see here, is to clamp all of the stiffeners down to the table because, again, they are very long and there is a little bit of some uh, gentle bowing to them, I think, just because of the size. So by clamping them down to the table, one, it made sure I didn't have to worry about holding it just so, um, but it held it flat and it held it in place and I didn't have to worry about it moving and it would made it much easier for me to then go and mark all of the little spots and then draw the long lines. I might be a little bit OCD, but again, I was trying to get it as straight as possible um, just to make sure that I got the, the holes all aligned well on those stiffeners when I was match drilling it to the tail cone skins. One thing you also have to do after you do the center lines is you need to cut 45 degree angles out of the edges of those stiffeners. And I was really proud of myself at first because I had come up with a way to go and measure those little angles using a triangle that I had there in the shop. And I had recorded a nice little video snippet to try and explain how I did it and promptly realized immediately after filming the snippet that I had been drawing the, uh, the lines backwards. So <laughs> looked at it, figured out the right way to draw the, uh, the angles on there and uh, have here a little uh, picture just to kind of show you how I rigged it up with two pieces of two by four uh, and the triangle there in the garage to get just like a rough 
45 degree angle there on uh, on the edges. After getting that all measured out, I went and cut them out there on the uh, on the bandsaw. And while I was working on trimming all those edges, Tyler started uh, well trimming all the ends. Tyler started working on deburring all of the edges there for the J channels. And once I got all of the ends cut to those 45 degree angles, I got to work with our um, bench grinder there to start deburring the ends. And the one thing I would just say is be very aware of your surroundings because again, these are very long pieces. In terms of cutting it, they're so light, that wasn't a problem trying to cut them on the bandsaw. I just stuck uh, the wood block underneath to support it. Like I've mentioned doing um, other times when we've had kind of some slightly awkwardly shaped pieces to go and run through the bandsaw, that wasn't a problem. But um, when you're trying to do then the deburring there of the ends that you've just cut, you know, if you're swinging it around <laughs> while you're trying to work it on the 3M wheel, uh, just, you know, you don't want to whack anybody or anything. So just kind of be aware of how long they are and look around you. So also when you're going to pick up any of those, um, little pieces that you've cut off now with the bandsaw, the little ends where you've where you've trimmed off the little bits, just be careful because those are very, very sharp. So I got out some leather gloves just to go and uh, pick them up just to not get stabbed. Just be careful, you know, don't want anyone getting hurt. Next, we start having some fun because now we've moved on to the laundron. So it gets exciting. And one of the first things you're doing there is you are drilling out holes to create notches for the attachment bars to fit into there once you get the laundrons onto the tail cone. And when I went to measure out the spot for where to drill the holes to help create the notches, I just used a little punch, uh, a sharp punch to put a little ding in the laundry run where I wanted the center of the drill to go just to kind of help guide it as it was getting started and help make sure that it wasn't going to drift anywhere um, when I was trying to get the drill bit going. Uh, and then when you, you drill it the first time, you drill it with a number 40 and then you upsize it to a one quarter inch drill bit and it does get a little bit gnarly there trying to because you're now you know upsizing it so much um so just you know take it slow it didn't it wasn't a problem but it is kind of just a little bit gnarly so just you know take your time after drilling the two holes um we went to go cut out the rest of the little notch there and this was a little bit trickier than with the j channels because these are heavier and they're so long and so at first we tried having tyler sit down and hold one end while i tried to feed it through the bandsaw but the little trick that we <laughs> discovered that worked out really well was to line up our drill press right next to the bandsaw and then adjust the table of the drill press to then and have additional support there holding it flat and level next to the table there of the bandsaw. So that was the best little trick that worked out the easiest. We then uh, set to rounding and filing down both of the notches, the, each one on each lingeron. I found it helpful again to clamp the lingeron down to the edge of the table and have the end there where I was gonna be uh, doing all the filing hanging just off the end of the table. Once again, it just it freed up my hands by having it clamped down there. Um, I could use both of my hands on the file trying to really smooth it out and round the corners and just get it all nice and smoothed down. Now we get to the fun part. We get to the bending, the bending of the laundrons. So first I got out the wood blocks again, just because I want to make sure not to damage the laundrons in the, the grip, the teeth there of the vise. So just put a wood block on either side and to use that to squeeze on the laundron. Um, and you go and you mark the measurement there for how far out it is. But what was interesting to me is I think I didn't, I didn't really understand where the bend was supposed to go. Like I didn't clearly understand what the bend was accommodating for. And so what I'm going to suggest is go look at the skins, go look at the side skins, because as soon as you do, it becomes very clear. If you're looking in the book, it's not particularly evident, 
just because of how slight the bend is, but there is a ever so tiny little change in the direction of the edge of the top of the two uh, side skins, the F1032 right and left side skins. But when you actually then pull it out and look at it, you suddenly can see where that little tiny bend is and it suddenly just changes, the edge changes direction and changes shape. Once you see that, it's like, okay, now I know what I'm trying to line up the lingerons to, now I know like, what direction the bend's supposed to go into and why, and you have also what to line it up with to make sure that you've done enough bend. So getting those out and seeing it kind of helped make it much more clear what exactly we were trying to do. And it was really a fair amount of uh, like just trial and error, just like with the previous video where we had it for the... Um, the attachment bars and getting to use that little wang <laughs> section from section five to go over um, how to, to flatten those out. It's really similar here. You're going to line up the little uh, line that you've drawn with the edge of those two wood blocks and then same thing, we're gonna preload it again. And so you're gonna preload it, give it a little whack and uh, kind of, I'd go with the less is more. And surprisingly, I mean, you can you can get a decent amount of bend from uh, a couple little wax. Hit a, hit a little bit, take it out, line it up against the skin, see how it did. Um, if we needed to um, to go more and till we got it to where it was just right. And on, I think at least one of them, we did end up like the book mentions getting a little bend in the other direction. So instead of, you're trying to get like a up down bend, if that makes sense, you're trying to bend it to make the bend in the laundry on line up with that top edge of those side skins. But sometimes what can happen is then you can get more of a left right bend like the book says while you're doing it. And we did find that on at least one of them and uh, just use that whole tabletop there because it was nice and flat to see where the left right bend was in the lingerons. And then I would hang it over the edge of the table and we'd hold it down on the table and then preload it off the edge of the table and give it a little whack until we could get it flattened back down to where it needs to be. So hopefully that makes sense. A quick little reminder, um, if you've been enjoying my videos and have found them to be helpful and you have recently purchased or are planning to purchase an empennage kit for any of the models of the Vans aircraft, please consider going down below and clicking on the link for their referral form, printing it out, completing it, and sending it back to Vans. I've already filled in all of our information. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but Vans will send me $100 as a thank you, and it's a really great way to support my channel. Plus, it really means a lot to me to know that somebody out there has appreciated the time and the effort that I've spent putting into trying to make these videos to help other builders out there like you. Back to the build. So now we're moving on to the sawhorses and we're getting out the bottom skin. And a quick suggestion because you're going to be working all around on both sides of the skin there is if you go out and get some of those cheap little um, like foam floor mats the you can get them like the foam the foam floor tiles like they might sell I, I think we got ours at Costco um but it's it's not very expensive but it's really nice to have just that little bit of padding down there and then it, with those floor tiles you can interlock them so you can make a larger piece but the point was just it was nice to have one or two down there on the ground for whenever I had to kneel or sit underneath it to get access to what we were trying to work on. Uh, it just made it a lot more comfortable, and especially if you end up down there for a while, instead of having to just sit on the garage floor, uh, having just those little foam tiles there to move around on uh, was just really nice. And then again, it's a really cheap thing to have to get, but it made it a lot more comfortable. Another thing to remember is that you're currently working on this part upside down. So right is left and left is right. When you're first putting all the pieces there, the bulkheads onto the, the um, the bottom skin for the tail cone. So just keep that in mind as you start adding the stiffeners into the bottom skin there and you're going to label them for which one is the left one and which one's the right one. Just keep in mind it's upside down. 
I'm gonna go more into drilling the stiffeners in the next video, I think, when we go over all of the ones uh, along the side skins. I don't wanna make this too crazy long. Um, but so in the, in the next video, I'll go over more about how we did the, the match drilling between all those stiffeners and the tail cone skins and more about the rest of the build with the tail cone. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so for more videos like these and to follow along as we build our RV10.